Hey folks, what's going on? It's me, Andrew Westmoreland, back again with another video. And I'm late to the punch. I say late, but like I, I see this stuff almost immediately within the hour of these breaking news stories. But, you know, I'm not in any rush to produce content. There's no monetary compensation for this, so I'm doing this on my own time. But we need to talk about this. Something happened in Idaho the other day that is a little strange, okay? So, 31 men were arrested in a U-Haul pickup truck, or a U-Haul truck. Members of Patriot Front, which is, I would say it's, it's a arguably a far-right organization. I think that's a fair assessment. And they had, like, riot shields. And they were charged with conspiracy to riot. This is very strange. Now... Apparently they were coming to a uh, Idaho Pride event. I, I don't know who, why, why is there a Pride event? Well, I, I mean, what I would say is, I guess a Pride event in Idaho can happen. I just can't imagine it would be very big. It's Idaho. Um, the the next question I have is, you know, apparently only one out of the thirty one men were from Idaho. So they flew in from around the country to come to Idaho, and and I and I'm confused as to why this this really doesn't make any sense at all. I I'm I'm seriously like at a loss for words here. I I'm struggling to form <laughs> like different points together to figure out why these people would do this. Why would they go there? Why wouldn't they go to Portland? Why wouldn't they go to L.A.? Why wouldn't they go to San Francisco? You know, why wouldn't they go to New York? Why are they going to Idaho to protest pride? Okay. So they're being, again, charged with conspiracy to riot. I, I don't even know what that means. Um... We just saw the second worst riots in American history in 2020. We had significant riots through, for the last five years. Race riots. Racially motivated riots. And very little accountability for those who were rioting. And these dudes didn't even get to the event to even actually riot. And they're arrested. And I'm confused. I, I, am, I am legitimately confused. I don't understand what's happening for this particular story because it does not make sense. Now, I understand if there was, like, federal informants, which probably half of them were, as, you know, history kind of shows at this point. They knew that they were going to this event. And maybe they have communications to where they intentionally plan on violence. And to instigate violence, not defensively. To attack people, like Antifa does. Okay. I have no problem with these people being arrested for that, if, if that is, in fact, what happened. I'm just really concerned with these double standards. Why is it always conservatives, the right wing, the far right? They're the ones who always get accountability. Never ending. Unending. Immediate. Swift. Brutal. Made example of type of justice. But the left and Democrats almost, almost exclusively never get that. We're in a civil war. And, and we need to prepare for that in every way that that means. You need to mentally prepare for the possibility that your neighbor may try to kill you one day because of your politics. You, you, you need to understand that a, a mayor may institute some kind of a, a legal and constitutional mandate because we're in a crisis and they decide that you are 
uh, because of your politics that you're now being detained. That's that's very possible. Okay, that's very possible. Okay, these things have happened before, and they will probably happen again, and I think we are a lot closer than people want to acknowledge. You know, our lives have been really good and really cushy here in America, but now we're getting to this point where two major political factions are butting heads to an extreme degree, and I I don't really see any way that this is going to stop other than one of them has to lose. Just like in the last civil war. One of them has to lose. Okay. So. More questions I have for this particular event. Would be why. They're not very bright clearly. If this is not like an entirely a fed op. uh, These people are not very bright because. Why would you rent a U-Haul? You have to use card. I'm pretty sure you don't use cash for U-Haul anymore. You gotta have some kind of ID, you know, something to, to, they know that you're the one responsible for this vehicle. So, I mean, you're leaving a paper trail and all this other stuff. Like, why wouldn't you use multiple vehicles? I, I it just, this, this doesn't make any sense at all. I'm, I'm not understanding this. This is very poorly planned. I just, I, I, I don't, I don't understand this at all. I, I really don't. It says there, the rest came from at least 11 different states. Washington, Oregon, Texas, Utah, Colorado, South Dakota, Illinois, Wyoming, Virginia, and Arkansas. And I believe one was Idaho. So, yeah, here's, this guy was from Idaho. Criminal conspiracy. They're charged with criminal conspiracy. So I, I again I just like where where is the police when Antifa and BLM plots riots and they plot, you know, these mass lootings and all this other stuff. Where where, where is law enforcement then? But for some reason for this one, this is so scary. Oh my god, it's so scary. They preemptively arrested these guys. And, you know, I'm gonna show you some stuff from Twitter where it originally broke. And here are some images. They like had these guys lined up. This like this huge bust, right? I, I just <laughs> apparently they didn't have weapons or any significant weapons. They didn't have guns or anything. Like they may have had bludgeoning tools, you know, like bats or bricks or, or that bricks isn't really their style. Something with a handle probably. But not really. They were mostly just saying, oh, they they just really had, they had shields and like one of them had a smoke grenade. It's like, okay, okay well, Antifa comes with far worse, typically. Like, I'm not really sure what what we're supposed to be looking at here. It, and, I'm, and I'm being serious. Like, I understand people are like, well, they're far right and they're scary and they're trying to attack a pride event. Yeah, like, I sent this out to everybody, my friends and family, and, and, and specifically the, the, the LGBT or LGB side of my, my friend circle and said, you know, this is why I'm not going to shit this year because it's getting weird out here. It's getting unsafe. And even though I, I, I typically carry a weapon on me lawfully and legally for self-defense, um, you know, it, it's great if I can use it, but if somebody detonates a, a bomb or something or runs a car through the crowd or, you know, uh, gets the jump on you before you can react, I mean, you're, you're still dead. So I'm going to I'm just going to avoid these big crowds in these in these highly controversial celebrations I, I just this just feels like a fed op and what I mean by a fed op is there's clearly several FBI agents in this group who are like ginning up hysteria all right you know let's let's do we got to do something these pride things are just you know so anti whatever anti-christian 
anti-straight people, anti-white, whatever you want to call it. And then they plan to go do a thing, and when they uh, uh, attempt to show up, you know, local law enforcement just swarms on them. Well, here's the thing, though. Apparently some random person saw them getting into this U-Haul truck outside of a hotel and called police. So I, I just... I, the, the whole thing doesn't really make sense. It definitely sounds like a fed op. And the actual real members of Patriot Front are, are clearly not very intelligent. They're like mongoloids. Like, retarded. And, I, and, I, and I'm not... <laughs> I mean, I'm being rude, but I'm being serious here. Like, you're clearly not very intelligent. And this is one of the other big problems I try to explain to people... We're living in this situation, this era of this information war, where the government knows everything. So don't think that, you know, the next terror attack or the next mass shooting or something that they didn't know about it. Very, very rarely are they not aware of it because they automatically get all this information. If you post on social media and it's something violent, like you're saying something violent, it gets flagged up multiple chains, right, as it escalates through, through their algorithms and is sent to law enforcement if not uh, directly sent to law enforcement like NSA and stuff they filter all of this every single thing that's posted on social media for the most part it they have access to now DMs and private messages and stuff may be a little bit more tricky because typically that, that's an extra layer but I, I wouldn't be surprised I wouldn't be surprised and your, your text messages for sure they're able to they you know we we saw all of this through the Edward Snowden leaks the Julian Assange stuff like this isn't new so to pretend like they can't stop Antifa it's like yeah they can they're just choosing not to they're they're choosing to pl- pick a political side instead of saying hey you know back in the 90s and the 2000s when there was some kind of extremist group trying to do a bad thing you would just shut it down. It doesn't it doesn't matter if it's left wing. It doesn't matter if it's right wing. They don't do that anymore. They only shut down the right wing stuff so it encourages and bolsters, emboldens the left and far left to, to commit uh, uh, ever escalating acts of violence. The government is not here for you if you do not have a Democrat or a left wing worldview. That's how bad this situation is. So what's going to end up happening is, again, similar to like the first Civil War, you're going to have the federal government doing all this, 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 this. I would say they're overstepping their bounds in, 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 in certain ways. And then the states are just going to be like, yo, we're not doing this anymore. Understanding that slavery was obviously evil. It's one of the most evil acts you can, you can commit. One of the worst crimes possible. Murder, then rape than slavery in that order then theft probably would be the next one it's it's up there it's definitely top five so don't don't misunderstand me when i say you know that the the an original civil war the federal government was overstepping their bounds i was like no they literally were like breaking the constitution though it was a state's rights issue now again morally speaking i get it we need to stop slavery but legally speaking there was complications here this new civil war is going to be about guns, it's going to be about abortion, and it's going to be about trans gay rights. That's it. Three things. Those are the three catalysts. And because the left is getting more and more extreme with their rhetoric in regards to these things, the the, the right has no choice but to counter that because They want to still maintain some level of of say in this country, right? Obviously, that's how politics go. It's an ebb and flow, a push push and pull. Okay? So, 90 Democrats were saying, you know, safe, legal, rare for abortion. Now, they're literally saying, oh, you could kill, you could abort a baby. The moment, the moment... You go into uh, pregnancy, or you're literally about to come out of the birth canal. You're crowning, and you can abort it. 
Some are even advocating as far as like a week later. Oh, a week later, you know, whatever. A couple. Some even like I'm not even kidding. I'm not making this up. Some Democrats are proposing, you know, a couple weeks, a month or so after a baby is born, you could te- you could abort it then too. That's fine. The gay trans stuff, you know, used to be not really an issue. It was like first. It was tolerate us, which you know I, I I absolutely agree. You should tolerate you know different people of different worldviews, and different personalities, and different uh, uh, lifestyles. But then it became oh you have to accept them, and I'm like well you know I'm I'm by and I understand that not everyone agrees with that, and some people are like deeply religious and whatever, and I and I fully understand that they will always hate me no matter what. And they will say that I'm a sinner and that I'm going to hell and all that stuff. And and, and I, they absolutely have that right to say that. The problem is, when we're saying you have to accept people, it's like, well, no. I, just like, I don't accept uh, 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 Islam as my religion or, or Judaism or Christianity or Hinduism or any of Buddhism, any of that. Doesn't, you know, that, that doesn't make sense. Like, you can't, what do you mean acceptance? Acceptance is a choice. Well, you could say, you could argue tolerance is a choice too, and you don't have to tolerate it, but I would say simply somebody existing, you should tolerate them. Accepting what they're doing is another story. Now, it it, 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 it became, uh, what is it, the celebration phase, where we started celebrating LGBTQ, and it was like, oh, you know, everyone's happy, and you know, you've you've already tolerated them, you already accepted them. Now we're we're having a celebration for this thing. It's like, okay, uh, uh, it makes me uncomfortable, but okay. And then now it's participation. Now it's not good enough that you tolerate them. It's not good enough that you accept them. It's not good enough that you celebrate with them. Now you have to participate with them. You have to participate with them. You have you. You can't be straight anymore. You have to be gay or bi or something or non-binary or trans or something. You have to become them or, or else you're a bigot. I'm not making this shit up. This is what these people are saying now. This new wave of uh, rainbow... I, I don't know what it is anymore. It's not what it used to be. And this is why almost every gay or, or bi or lesbian friend I have does not want anything to do with that flag association with that flag or the lgbtq community they do not care they're like nope 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 these people have gone off the rocker because it's become hyper political instead of what it used to be is this is like hey leave us alone we're equal to you that's what it was and now it's no you have to like become us and we want your children that's the that's the next phase of it so then you're gonna have these people you're gonna have these people popping up because they're sick of seeing the trans uh, uh, children being trans transitioned medically and, and cosmetically transitioned to other genders, other sexes, Beca- because it's a, it's a massive affront to human decency. You leave kids alone. The grooming, the drag uh, kids shows, all the stuff. It's it's disgusting. They know it's disgusting. And it's pissing people off. It's radicalizing people. People are now wanting to take action. They have to take action because it goes completely against their worldview. Instead of what we had in the 90s and the 2000s where, yeah, I mean, we still had issues and we're trying to, we were trying to come together. But by like 2005, 2010, it was like, that was peak. There's no, you're, you're not getting any, any, any better than that in this kind of uh, uh, society. And then we started regressing back because they're going extreme. The left is going the, the, as, as extreme as you possibly could get. I have predicted, give it uh, one to three years when you're going to have politicians openly advocating for adults and children to be able to have 
sexual relations together. I guarantee it's going to happen. Because they keep pushing the envelope to the extreme. And and I guarantee... It, that's, that's it. When they start trying to do that, and they're openly talking about it, the violence is just going to... It's going to explode. People are going to snap. It's bad enough for the drag shows, because it's grooming. It's literally grooming. It's, it's deeply sexual. You know, drag shows are deeply sexual adult content. And... They're pushing people to these extremes. They have to act. Every fiber of their being says they have to do something or else they're participating. If you don't do something about it, you're, you're, you're allowing it to happen, basically. That's, that's why people are reacting this way. Okay? Just like the left does the same thing. So I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching, if indeed you still are, and I will see you all next time.